Hello everyone, I hope you're well. My name is Tim Sheehan, I'm editor of the Brewers Journal. Uh, we are here today in Nottingham and it's great to be here at Liquid Light with the founder, Tom Stone. Thanks for having us, Tom. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming. How are you doing? Yeah, very well, thank you. Great stuff, great stuff. How's, uh, how's this year been treating you so far? Okay, all things considered, it's definitely not easy out there right now, which I don't need to tell anyone. Um, but we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. It's... Uh, it's been a, oh, it was an okay winter and we're, we're definitely starting to ramp up for the spring, summer kind of season. So quite excited. Great stuff. Great stuff. I mean, it's, uh, I think doing okay is probably the best we could probably hope for <laughs> right. at, the, yeah. at the moment. I mean, it goes without saying it's been a, a challenging few years and I think everyone is always striving for something resembling normality or stability and then something else comes along. But, Absolutely. Um, but with that in mind, I mean, I, I know your, your brewery kind of grew and 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 evolved during COVID, but uh, let's take it back to the beginning, if you if we may, and mm -hmm. uh, tell us. I mean, how did it come about that you wanted to open a brewery? So, I mean, I originally started uh, home brewing in 2015, as a lot of us brewers do, come from home brewing background. Um, I really wanted to kind of brew more modern craft beers. It was still kind of Brewdog and a couple of others at that point. Um, and then a brewery local to us called Totally Brewed popped up and were really exciting and new at the time and, and definitely, you know, something that uh, we'd not seen in Nottingham before. So I just hassled Rob, the owner, to give me a job and ended up applying the next year and, and, and getting to work with him for a couple of years. Um, and then to about two and a half years there, I kind of applied my trade, learned a lot about the, the kind of crafts and, you know, we did a lot of real ale there and, and gradually making the market and, you know, the, the move into the kind of keg market, which wasn't massive in Nottingham at the time, um, but has definitely transformed in the, in the following years. Um, and after kind of, yeah, applying my trade there for a while, I um, decided I wanted to branch out on my own. Um, went down, kind of downscaled again, back to kind of nano brewing scale, set up my dream home brewery in my shed. Um, all the bells and whistles I could have wanted and just kind of, yeah, started really, you know, pushing my new recipes and getting our, getting our beer out in bottles and, you know, real uh, kind of kitchen table, uh, cottage industry kind of stuff to start with. Um, and a few people were really impressed and, and, you know, we had a good reputation to start with. So um, I progressed on to, to Cuckoo Brewing. Um, we worked with Magpie Brewery for a good few years, right into the start of the pandemic. Um, and yeah, they really helped us out and giving us the opportunity to bring bigger and bigger batches and getting it out there. And yeah, I understand that they were like integral that. in those early for, you know, formative stages for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. Gavin and Katrina, uh, the former owners, they've actually sold on now. But um, yeah, they were absolutely superb and, and really, you know, hospitable and gave us all the advice we could have needed. And you know, I kind of got to sling my recipes through a bigger kit and, and see what we could do. Um, Worked with, you know, built a lot of wholesalers and, and stuff like that and, and business that way and, and gradually progressed. Uh, then lockdown hit <laughs> and put a spanner in the works for everyone. Were you already looking at potentially going out on your own at that point? We really we were desperate to upscale. Um, it was very difficult for us to can and things like that at that scale. Um, the minimum quantities needed were an issue, but also just the sheer space. It was quite chock a block in Magpie. They did a very good job of uh, maximizing the use of their space. Um, so we could never get like a, you know, a canning line in. We were desperate to get our beer in cans. We started sending it off to can it and the results were really good. We, you know, we were quite pleased with the fact that even though the beer had traveled quite away and stuff, but yeah, we, want, we wanted to branch out and get our own space, bigger space, um, you know, possibly our own canning line and which we're still dreaming of. But um, yeah, it was it was time, but first we had to kind of get through COVID. Um, and how did you do that? All web shop. I mean, again, Gavin and Katrina were amazingly helpful. They allowed us to sell through their license. They have, had their off license for their pub, uh, for their um, tap room. Obviously, being that the produce, that all the liquid was produced essentially on their books, is essentially their beer at that point. Um, we were allowed to uh, start our own little web shop and end up going around Nottingham for hours and hours at a time. I think I'd have done more driving around Nottingham even than our long delivery runs up, up north to kind of Sheffield, Manchester <laughs> and stuff like that. I spent more time on Nottingham roads over lockdown than 
than that. And um, yeah, we, the locals really came out in support and, and helped us a lot, kept us afloat big time. And everyone was having barbecues in the back garden with our mini kegs and well, it was milk bottles at first. And then eventually we managed to borrow a crowler machine and, and do some like 500 mil crowlers and, and stuff like that. I mean, we were just working our way through our keg stock really and, and trying to stay afloat. But um, yeah, we managed it. And obviously now we're in your fantastic, I say new brewery or two years or so? Two, yeah, coming up to two years here now, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, God, I don't know where that's gone. <laughs> no, 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 join the club, join yeah. the club. But can you talk us through a little bit at, um, a bit about the volumes you can produce here? Mm, yeah, so we've kind of stayed at a similar level to what we were at Magpie. And in fact, the first fermenter we've got in our row of fermenters is uh, one that we installed at Magpie. Um, so we, we kind of tend to brew between 19 and 22 hectolitres per brew, um, brewing between kind of two and three times a week depending on tank space. Um, and we can, this, our kit by Willis is, has been absolutely amazing. Um, it's kind of got, again, it kind of like I did when I went into the brew shed, getting all my dreams, dream bells and whistles on my little kit. I've kind of done the same here. And, you know, we've got motorized mash rakes and stuff. So I'm not breaking my back digging the mash anymore and, and things like that. And we use a lot of T90s in the boil so we can kind of, it's a lot of easier clean down. Everything's CIP ready and it's, yeah, it's a really great kit. And we can potentially brew up to 30 hectoliters per brew, um, which obviously we've not done yet, being that we don't have a 30 hectoliter fermenter or even a couple of smaller ones. So uh, we're hoping to do that at some point, branch out into kind of bigger brews or even double brewing. Um, but as it stands, yeah, brewing, brewing kind of tw between 20 and 22 hectoliters, most brews. And uh, yeah, putting your sauce through it. What's the, um, do, do you have any particular beers that account for the bulk of your volume? Yeah, so I mean, one thing we've seen over the last um, two years since opening is a, is a big shift towards cask and, um, and also core range. Um, you know, we didn't really, I mean, we kind of had a core range when we first started and we were hand bottling and then, as we grew, we kind of wanted to, we only had limited amount of brew slots at, at Magpie. So we wanted to do new, new, new all the time. And we kind of only kept the one beer in, in permanently, which is our Pink Moon Raspberry Wheat. Um, but yeah, so we've seen, seen a big push towards, towards cask beer. So we've been putting out a lot of our kind of cask core range, which is our Wizard of Finance, which is a bitter, the best bitter. Um, Day Tripper's 4.3% Pale Ale. What we're drinking now, which isn't actually green, <laughs> um, <laughs> our 3.9% uh, um, mosaic pear, which is ramble on. And we kind of semi core is less dangerous, which was one of our first pails, it's like 4.5% New England pale, citrus sure. mosaic hops, kind of standard juicy boy. Yep. So, yeah, that's uh, doing a lot of those recently. So, it's interesting because obviously you were inspired by sort of modern styles, mm -hmm. but it seems to be that there is this sort of you know, in the, I think the industry collectively goes through these sort of periods of transition. Absolutely. And it seems that we're in that one at the moment where the appetite is for quality, well-made, full of flavor, but lower ABV pails, yeah. IPAs and, and great lagers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we've definitely seen that. I mean, we're producing, uh, we're on our third iteration of our lager now, volume three, which is a kind of Czech style pills now, which you guys have had a taste of. Um, but we're, look, yeah, we've, we've done... Over the years, we've really tried to perfect our kind of sessionable pale ale and, and other styles, you know, like our raspberry wheat. Um, I've always liked drinking pints. I, you know, I came from drinking real ale around Nottingham, a lot of Castle Rock beers, a lot of Harvest Pale. I've probably still had more pints of Harvest Pale than I've had of my own beer over the years. Um, so, yeah, I, you know, real passion for, for a pint, a sessionable pint beer and something that's reliable and you can go back to again and again. And I do think the focus with craft beer kind of moved away from that for a little while. And I really wanted to make sure I could nail those beers before branching out into the kind of stronger, crazier stuff, which we do do from time to time as well. But um, I'm really passionate about our, our kind of sessionable cask, especially kind of session pails. But do you think, you know, as a sort of acceptance of, you know, quotation craft beer, do you think it, that's why now people are going, okay, I don't, I don't need you to be, need you to be a big brewery, a big name. Mm. What I want is quality and repeatability. So mm -hmm. you can be a smaller brewery compared to a huge macro, but 
as long as you're making beer that people can rely on, yeah. then they're going to come back to you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we often find that, you know, our, uh, our core beers are, are definitely kind of a way of getting through the door for a lot, of, a lot of places. And then they'll tend to buy more specials as they go forward. Or they'll go the opposite way and want a permanent line of one of our core beers. So, um, but yeah, reliability and repeatability, consistency across batches, I do think is is something that often gets lost in in craft beer. And um, yeah, I really enjoy the challenge of 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 at our scale, especially of of pushing the same beer over and over again out the kit and being happy with it. And um, you know. Very rarely any changes to the recipe, the odd tweak to the process just to make sure it's, it's staying good quality. But um, yeah, I do think it's really important and, and a nice thing to be able to do in your arsenal before you go and, and push on with, to the other stuff. Doubt. But when it comes to, you know, if you've got a beer and you're like, okay, I'm really happy with this. I mean, how, how do you approach that sort of further dialing in of the recipe or the process? Um, I think a lot of that, a lot of it is uh, kind of ingredient selection. Being a brewery my size, we don't really get a great deal of um, buying power over, say, hops and batches and, you know, being able to decide on our exact crop that we want. You know, we're not at that size. Um, so it's very rarely happens, but every now and again, I have returned hops that I've not been happy with or use them in different parts of the process. Say they're not as fresh. Um, they can work better in the boil because you can blow off a lot of the undesirable Kind of characteristics but um yeah i think really making sure and occasionally we'll tweak malt bills we'll tweak not necessarily the ingredients the uh, the actual malt bill but the ingredients that we're using the, the maltster that we're using for various things we might swap in some specialty malts from another maltster um flaked oats as well can change quite a lot so you know we kind of we, we have played around with those but yeah it's all about just I feel like a lot of our beers will start at kind of 75 to 80, 90% where I want them to be. And then it's just tweaking them for that last 10% and, yeah. and, and getting them just to perfection. And well, I think it's as important, you know, new, new recipes are great, but, you know, getting it to where you want to be yeah. is, is I think, you know, people have often said, you know, paraphrasing here, but, you know, if you ever feel like that beer is at its perfect form, then you should probably give up because right. there's always, you know, oh, there's always, always something in every improve. walk of life, yeah, right? yeah, in every yeah. walk of life, you know, there's absolutely, th there's no harm. And it's, it's interesting that you said, you know, you've, you've really seen that <clears throat> popularity of cask, mm -hmm. but you know, this is cask beer that would be different than a lot of the cask drinking community would be used to it. It's, it's, it's incredibly flavorful mm -hmm. in a different way. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's hop forward. It, you know, this beer here would sing on cask and on keg. And I suppose not many, not many beers you can really say that about. No, that's it. And um, yeah, I mean, I do think while we do things like our best bitter, I've done milds in the past. We've done an ESB and, you know, we do experiment with some more kind of traditional style stouts and things like that. Um, I really love doing those recipes and, and the, the, the challenge of trying to nail a style that has been done so well over the years by so many different people. And you've already got and the, the, the palate knowledge in your head from years of drinking different other breweries versions of that beer. Um, so it's a big challenge to step up to like these classic styles, but also it's really fun to take the classic styles and push them forward a little bit yeah. to where you want yeah. them. Um, you know, as I mentioned about totally brewed earlier, like they, when we start, when I started there, like their pails were, were in my opinion, miles ahead of what anyone else was doing in cask. And I've very much tried to build on that myself. Um, yeah. And then ramble on is our kind of take on that. And yeah, hazy, juicy as you like, you know, super flavorful without being cloying and over the top kind of mm. hopping. It's still got to be sessionable, which is again, as I said, a bit of a passion of mine. I mean, you've got a fantastic tap room here and like a lot of great breweries in the UK and uh, further afield, um, it's an integral part of a brewery um, for the community and obviously for uh, financial stability as well of the brewery. I mean, going back to the cast conversation, yeah, it, it feels like we've been talking about it forever and how, how can we preserve and help cask thrive, mm -hmm. you know, not just survive. I mean, is the future of cask places like this in tap rooms? I, I think so. I do think that's a huge part of it. I mean, you won't get fresher than here. The beer has not traveled more than, you know, 20 meters from tank to, to where it's been tapped. So um, it is often an extremely good place to, to seek out cask is in a brewery's tap room. And, 
you know, it was a while before we actually put in our, our, our hand pulls because there were so many great real ale cask pubs around us and we didn't want to lose their business and we wanted to keep supplying, you know, these absolute Nottingham staples. So we were like, right, we'll do the keg. You guys still got access to all our cask. You've got something that we've not got in the tap room. Um, but as, the, as time went on, demand here for the cask was really high as well. And we were like, okay, well, we'll, we'll do it. And um, it hasn't really affected things. A lot, a lot of the locals still buying it. And, you know, we've got, you know, permanent lines testing out in places like the King Billy, which is an absolutely legendary Nottingham pub. And, you know, it's, uh, yeah, it's really exciting to, to see, you know, I've always, like I said, always been a cask drinker. So yeah. it's very exciting. No, great stuff. Great stuff. And obviously, you know, Nottingham is, is one of those names synonymous with great beer. I mean, mm. you, you've got, obviously, you've got a lot, a lot of, if we can call it competition for, yes. for places to go. I mean, how important has that beer buying community been, you know, to, to really help you grow and evolve? Yeah, it's been it's super passionate in Nottingham. There's a, yeah, there's a, you know, as you say, for want of a better word, competition. There is quite a lot of us. Um, I do think at one point we had more breweries than anywhere in the country and within a certain mileage. And I know we definitely have more bars in the city center than anywhere in the country. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a really good community and you see all the same faces and they'll even kind of move around from brewery to brewery or bar to bar or bar to brewery, which, you know, happens quite a lot as well. Um, so yeah, there's, and we've had amazing things like the Robin Hood Beer Festival, which was used to be up at the castle just near the trip to Jerusalem, Jerusalem that we were talking about earlier. Um, and then that's moved now to, and then it was at the, it was at the ice arena around the corner from here for a while. And now it's down in the West Bridgeford at the cricket ground, Trent bridge. And, um, that's an absolute Nottingham staple and, you know, a great place to, to, to meet everyone and, and, and see everyone and try each other's new beers and have a chat about what everyone's up to, what are people struggling with, you know, Oh, can we help each other out with things? And yeah, there's, there's been some camaraderie and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a great scene. I wouldn't swap it. I'm very, very happy to be in Nottingham. I think it, when we started, it was quite up and coming. You know, we had a couple of the craft breweries popping up, but we didn't have as many as other big cities, you know, like Leeds and Manchester and yep. Sheffield and Bristol and, and, and places like that. So it was really nice to be able to kind of jump on the bandwagon before it was entirely full, you know sure. what I mean? And, yeah, and, yeah. And, be, and put our little stake into it. And Well, no, you're an important part of it. I like... I like to think so. I like, we, I like to think we have become that way. And, and you know, the Snenton area, especially the kind of rejuvenation of Snenton market has been amazing. Obviously, starting with like Neon Raptor there and then, um, you know, like Blend Coffee and Stewart's Roastery and, yeah. you know, a lot of beautiful little independent shops and, and stuff around there. And that's extended now. We've got Bustler's Street Food, which opened up last year. And um, yeah, so it's nice to be, we're just a stone's throw away from them, but it's nice to feel like part of that that kind of movement like you know i want to see a couple more breweries down here i want to make this wants to be brewing quarter of nottingham i i love it down here give it time yeah give it time so tom you've got a fantastic tap room here but there's really more to the tap room than just the excellent beer you're brewing yes thank you yeah we're uh, very proud of the space it's uh definitely all i dreamt of back when i was brewing hard at work in my shed mm. developing all the beers and yeah uh, it's um yeah you've got to take a step back and remind yourself of that sometimes because dream is uh is often a bit harder than you realize but um yeah no we uh we've got a big passion for music as well as beer and uh, at liquid line all our beers are named after songs or lyrics and some more obvious than others i quite like it when people get more of an obscure reference yep. when i'm working the tap room uh bar which is a bit of a rarity these days but if i do i get a get a real kick out of it when they're like oh is that a frank zappa song oh that's what, you know it's like, i love that stuff but yeah we put on a lot of gigs here as well um we actually started getting quite a good reputation as a mm. as a venue and um you know we've had uh what was it we had pet needs uh, who are a new up-and-coming band who just signed to frank turner's label they played here last friday nice um really good show lots of you know really good turnout um and they sort us out you know we're getting quite a lot of tour touring bands hitting us up um, despite the fact we're a big kind of open echoey space, which isn't ideal for music, but, um, you know, we've got the custom sound system, which works a treat and a very experienced sound engineer and my friend Ben. Um, and we've had, who else do we have? We've had, uh, so far sounds have just done a show here, which was really cool. Um, sadly didn't video it for YouTube, but, um, they might be back in the future. So hopefully okay. we'll get one on online. Um, 
We've had uh, Beans on Toast play here, who um, is a good friend of um, Mocky Ben, who does all our food. Um, he doesn't do our food. He does his own food in our in our tap room. Yeah, yeah. Everything here is vegan. We've got a vegan food vendor in, in uh, Mocky D's. Nice. It's, uh, excellent, excellent stuff if yeah, you're ever down here at a weekend. But um, yeah, so... Yeah, come come the weekend, the place transforms quite a lot, and and we get we get the most out of the space, and you know it's it's really exciting, and eventually one day maybe we'll start recording a few of the gigs and or live yeah, stream. Yeah, I do. don't know. I mean, I've got all these lofty ideas, but so little time and money to actually do them. But oh, well, you've come a long way in 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 that you know period of time anyway, so mm. you should be very proud. I mean, yeah. um, obviously, great passion for for beer and music. I mean, uh, Liquid Light, it's a great alliterative name for a brewery but there's more to that than just a cool name yeah so the name came from uh, actually watching a pink floyd documentary um a while ago when we were, we were actually kind of think trying to rack our brains for a good bit for a good brewery name you know i'd already decided that i wanted to do it and you know just needed the name and um yeah we were watching footage of pink floyd play the ufo club in uh, in london and um they were they had all their projections in the background and my brother who's also really into psychedelic music he's in a he's, he's got a band as well that does that kind of stuff and he was like you know what about liquid light brewing company and i was like that's absolutely instantly the one like yeah. we had i had we had names before that were pretty good we we're quite pleased with instantly forgot them can't remember them for the life of me now <laughs> i think i even had email addresses registered and yeah. can't remember so the moment we came up with that, like that night I was on company's house. I was like, register it, register it, you know, yep, for anyone yep. else, buy the domain name. And um, yeah, really proud of it. And, you know, since then it kind of combined our, our passion for the psychedelia and um, all the kind of music of the 60s and 70s. And we actually do our own projections across, we've got all these fantastic white walls, which are just begging to be projected on in this in the venue. So yeah, we'll do projections and especially when we've got gigs on. Um, yeah, and it's it's really exciting, and I feel like it brings something a bit unique to the tap room that I've not seen before. Well, I think it's it's, it's a brewery is you know at its core anyway, you know, mm. a source of creative expression. So you've kind of just overlaid that kind of literally as well, but with with other art forms as well. And I think it's really cool that you know by having gigs and great food as well, you're giving people the platform to share what they can do, mm -hmm. all while having a great beer as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um. You know, Nottingham has obviously been a great community for you, great support. I mean, do you do much outside of, of the city as well in terms of your beer distribution? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we do quite a lot um, kind of up north. And um, we used, especially pre-pandemic, we had a really good kind of following in Manchester. A lot changed over the, over the lockdowns and some places closed, changed ownership, managers left. So... Definitely post lockdown, post COVID, it was it was a, a bit of a challenge, kind of rebuilding those relationships. Um, but we've we've definitely on the way there now, and you know we we sell a lot to kind of Sheffield, Huddersfield, my old stomping ground, and um, I've got some good customers in Halifax, and then across to Manchester. But we distribute quite a lot through wholesalers, so we go down south quite a lot. We've got um, kind of uh, Bristol and the South covered down there, and and do a little bit through London. Um, which I always find is quite a compliment because there's enough of going on in London as it is without pulling beer from us. But um, yeah, it's always nice to, to send a pallet down there. So yeah, we get about a bit actually. And even when we first started, even when we were cuckoo back, back at the small scale cuckoo brewing, there wasn't, like I mentioned, there wasn't really that massive scene for keg in Nottingham, you know, at the time. And it was, it was kind of like pre, pre junkyard and pre, you know, some of the venues we've been just been talking about. Um, so we were shipping a lot of keg outside of Nottingham. So we've kind of always uh, had a bit more of a, a kind of um, national spread than, than local only. And really it wasn't until after COVID that we got more of a local support and people actually realized we were Nottingham based. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's really exciting. And the Nottingham scene is just constantly improving and it's, yeah, it's a really good place to be. Yeah, no, it's really exciting. I mean, as we said, you know, like every brewery, it's gone through a few challenging uh, couple of years, mm. to, say, to say the least. I mean, I'm really enthused and excited by, you know, the, the gigs that you've got, you know, mm. the, the, and the potential coming up this year as well. But but for you, the rest of the year, what, what's, what's the plan? Have you got expansion in mind or any particular sort of 
beer styles you want to make or people you want to work with? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, we've we're kind of chatting to a few people about collabs. I mean, I can't can't mention names right now. It's all in the embryonic mm-hmm. stages, but um, yeah, we really want to push the collabs uh, this year. I mean, last year was very much a kind of figure out where we were with this place and everything the way the way things were going, and we kind of concentrated on really nailing our brews on this kit and. And we had a couple of collabs, but I didn't really want to push my luck. I wanted to kind of really concentrate on getting used to the new kit and and brewing the best beers I could. So now it's time to kind of branch out and hit up all those people who uh, who put up with me while we were cuckoo brewing, while we were small. And, and, and yeah, I've got to get, get some people back for, for having us. So um, yeah, a lot of collabs, hopefully. Um, we'd like to continue to grow. We'd like to add some more tanks. There's definitely space. Um, uh, depending on sales and stuff this summer, like very much like to see a bigger tank in here doing a couple of double brews um, for some of our core stuff. Um, and I love a little canning line, but can can sales kind of, I don't know how everyone else is finding it, but we've definitely noticed a massive fluctuation and, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, really quality kind of small pack distributors disappearing and, and a lot of you know, bottle shops closing and stuff. I mean, as there as there are breweries and bars, but um, yeah, we've seen we've seen a bit of a kind of fluctuating demand in cans. So it's uh, definitely an investment I've got to consider. But yeah, we'd yeah. love to get some small pack out there because it can travel a bit further, and you know, you can get more people to try your beer and become fans. I think yeah, especially in, in cities, you know, f- further away from from Nottingham, mm. you know, it, it's it gets your name out there, gets the brand out there mm. for people that want to get liquid light brewing beers what's the best way i mean we have a web shop if you want to buy some small pack you can buy directly from us um obviously there's the tap room on the weekends if you're local um but really just if you've got a, a dedicated local and you've not seen our stuff there just ask them and um, on the trade side uh on the trade side just hit us up um sales at liquidlightbrewco.com we'll uh we'll definitely be happy to kind of work with you and and build a relationship always happy to take on new custom Well, thanks again to uh, Tom Stone at Liquid Light Brewing Company for joining us here today. Thank you for Um, having me. No, thanks for having us. It's been been brilliant. And um, so at the beginning, my name's Tim, uh, editor of the Brewer's Journal, and look forward to seeing you soon.